This is ABTV, Animal Bites Television. For animal lovers, by animal lovers. Here's something you might not know about me as a person. I think arachnids are freaking cool. I'm the proud owner of many a creepy crawly, and I think that the bad reputation that spiders get is completely undeserved. Arachnophobia is the number one most common fear in the world. Most people's immediate reaction to seeing a spider is like, and I think that the key to getting over any fear is education. So let's do some exposure therapy and check out the five weirdest arachnids on the planet. My name is Jason Miller, and you're watching Five Weird Animal Facts. Number one is a family of spiders known as arcades. Spiders that have necks. Technically, it's an extension of the cephalothorax, but still, it looks like a neck. Arcades are unique in a number of ways. Obviously, the whole neck situation, but they also have those crazy long jaws that they use to safely capture and kill their favorite prey other spiders. In fact, spiders make up the entirety of the arcade's diet, which earned them their common name, the assassin spider. If you're wondering why you've never seen anything like this before, it's probably because these spiders are extremely small. Depending on the species, they range between 2 and 8 millimeters. They're also nocturnal and very cryptically camouflaged. Let's dive into the next arachnid on this list. You'll get that pun in approximately 4 seconds. Number 2 is the diving bell spider. The spider is named after the submersible pod called a diving bell used for underwater science things. But that's only kind of interesting. The really cool thing about this spider is that it spends its entire life underwater. It spins its web among underwater vegetation and attaches strands of silk which lead to the water's surface. The spider uses these strands of silk like a ladder to get to and from the surface in order to collect air. It does this by poking its butt out of the water and then resubmerging. Once it's back underwater, air is trapped in a bubble around its body due to hydrophobic hairs covering its abdomen. The spider then brings the air bubble back down to its web and creates an air pocket which it uses as a reservoir for oxygen. The diving bell spider does literally everything underwater. It hunts small fish and aquatic insects and even reproduces underwater. The eggs are laid and hatch in the bubble nest with the mother and stay there until they're big enough to leave and make bubble nests of their own. Number three also enjoys making its home in unusual places. This is the shell squatting spider, an elusive Madagascan spider that makes its home in snail shells. It's able to lift the shells into the air using a network of silk threads to suspend it from the branches of a thorny succulent bush as high as 30 centimeters. A lot of work goes into creating the suspended bunker, so the question must be asked, why? Well, not only does it look fancy, but it provides protection from predators. And hoisting it above the ground means that there's no chance of the shell being invaded by ants, which could attack and eat the spider. The shell squatting spider was first discovered in 1926, but its unique shell lifting behavior wasn't recorded in the wild until 2011. The BBC got some incredible footage of this that I'll post on the Five Weird Animal Facts Facebook page for you to check out. Number four, the vinegaroon. This strange looking creature isn't arachnid, but it's neither a spider or a scorpion. It actually belongs to an order of arachnids known as whip scorpions. The vinegaroon has no venom injecting fangs or stingers, but instead has a gland at the base of its tail that sprays a mist of 85% concentrated acetic acid, the main ingredient in vinegar. But just because it sprays acid doesn't mean that it's going to melt your skin like xenomorph blood. If a person is sprayed by the vinegaroon, they will be more uncomfortable due to the strong smell of vinegar than from the acid's effect on the skin. Unless you have an allergic reaction, it's completely harmless. The vinegaroon is built a bit differently than most arachnids. The first pair of its eight legs are used as sensory tools to feel around their environment rather than for walking. Also fairly obvious is the tail-like caudal appendage at the end of its body. This is used similarly to the front legs as a sensory organ. The purpose of all these feeler thingies is to compensate for its poor vision and nocturnal lifestyle. The final creepy crawly on this list is a close relative of the vinegaroon the Tanzanian giant tailless whip scorpion. Also a member of the whip scorpion order, this guy is a bit different because it's more stout in shape, lacks a rear caudal appendage, and its front legs are much longer and thinner than those of the vinegaroon. Now I could keep talking about Tanzanian giant tailless whip scorpions, but instead, how about I just show you one? All right guys, this is Wally, my Tanzanian giant tailless whip scorpion. Named him after Wally West, the Flash, because he is insanely fast, just like all tailless whip scorpions are. You can see I'm holding him here. I got no worries. He's, there's no way he can hurt me. Uh, and if you can tell, he doesn't look so giant. He's still very young. They can get a nine inch leg span when they're full grown. These guys are awesome, man. Uh, they are carnivorous. They eat insects. I'm feeding this guy crickets and mealworms and wax worms. And unlike a lot of arachnids in captivity, these guys love to have their space. If you get a tarantula, usually uh, you know, you can put it in a small critter keeper and he'll be happy his whole life. This guy, I have, uh, this size, I have him in a 15 gallon exoterra. So a big long vertical tank because they love to climb and they love to move around at night. 
Uh, this is usually what they do during the day. They just press up against the tree and camouflage in really nicely and uh, don't move at all. Then when night comes out, they're out there searching around with their feelers, trying to find some food, trying to find a mate. And uh, you can see how they capture their prey there. Once they locate it with the two feelers in the front, they have those two pinchers at the front there. If you look in closely at them, they really do just look like, they look like this. They look like hands like this, but they're really sharp and pointy. Uh, but, you know, again, he's not going to attack me. He's not going to pinch me. I'm in no danger at all. And uh, they don't even have the spray like the vinegaroon does. They're completely harmless. Thanks for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed. Make sure to let me know in the comment section what animals and topics that you'd like to see in future episodes. Also, like Fiber and Animal Facts on Facebook and follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Miller's Wildlife. Subscribe to the channel for more awesome animal things and stuff. And one more thing before I go. Make sure to check out wildbrian.com to stay up to date on our South Africa adventure, which is happening right now. I'm filming this episode two weeks before it airs, but I'm sure future me is having a fantastic time. As always, guys, my name is Jason Miller, and I'll see you next Monday on 5 Weird Animal Facts. I'm a wildlife rescuer, field expert, and conservationist. Welcome to Corey's Wild World. This is ABTV.